hey, Adam, are you back yet? Hey, at, at, Adam, you, you, you still gone? Where, where, where you at, little buddy? Where you at, little buddy? Where you at, big guy? I'm Peter Martin, and I am not Adam Banis. This is the You'll Hear It podcast, daily jazz advice coming at you, coming at you strong and solo in 2019. Adam is still gone this week. Uh, we are going to be making fun of him, mocking him as much as possible, but still giving you that daily jazz advice that you've come to love and expect. Uh, my name is Peter Martin. I am here at the piano, not in the pod cave, but adjacent to the pod cave. I have my mid-morning snacks here, so I'm very excited about that. Um, hashtag plant-based for 2019. Um, today we are talking about, hey Peter, what are we talking about? I don't know, buddy. I'm gonna give you seven ways to swing. And I want you, as I'm giving you these seven ways to be thinking about, how many, how many ways has Adam Manis given you to swing? Maybe zero. So I'm gonna be seven ahead of him, just putting that out there. Okay, so swing, we talk about this all the time, you know, in jazz, and it, it kind of becomes this elusive thing. And it shouldn't be because this is the foundation of what we do. This is kind of like saying I have an American accent, I have a Canadian accent, I have an Australian accent, I have, you know, um, I, I, uh, those are all for speaking English, of course. Maybe you speak French, I have a French accent, I have a Southern French accent. You know, this is just sort of how we do what we do, how we talk, how we tell our stories, sort of the foundation. And, and look, it's not the only um, way, the only kind of groove or, or, or um, accent that we use in jazz, but it's a very fundamental one to, to many of the ways that we play this music. So we want to have a kind of a good handle on it, but I want to hopefully demystify it too a little bit. This is not some elusive thing that you can't learn to do. You absolutely can learn to do it. And most of you that think you're not swinging probably already are. You might need to work on it. So I'm gonna give you seven ways to swing as sort of examples of ways to get into it. But this doesn't need to be that difficult is what I'm trying to say. Okay, number one. Syncopate, okay? Now, what is syncopation? We talked about this a little bit yesterday with the, co with the comping patterns, but this is just about the juxtaposition, the, the rhythmic resolution of the upbeat and the downbeat. So if I'm playing over a B-flat blues, a one, two, three, four. Like just starting that phrase, one, two, three, four. I'm starting on the downbeat, but I'm accenting the upbeat. So I'm starting on the down of one, and then the upbeat of two. So I'm just playing a simple eighth note line. And look, I played four different ones because it doesn't matter what notes I play, it's about the rhythm. So that's just all eighth notes. But when we accent, we can bring out some syncopation. So I'm just gonna accent that second note, with that second eighth note. One, two, three, four. And then I did it again. When did I do it? One, two, three, four. On the end of four, okay? One, two, three, four. Okay? So this first way is just about accenting um, the upbeat on simple eighth notes, right? And you don't want to do this every time. That'll be corny. Like if you go... corny, right? But if you do it at selected time, and you can practice this like this, ah, one, two, one, two, three, four. play continual eighth note lines. It's hard, it's hard to make that sound good, but it's a good exercise and eventually, you know, you'll have that kind of a sound and be able to incorporate that into what you're doing, okay? That's number one. Number two, 
and our seven ways to swing is going to be listen. Now, this is normally number one, but I actually forgot to say it number one, so today it's number two. But that doesn't mean <laughs> that it is not of number one importance, as always. And, and really, this kind of listening, I think, to learn how to, you know, really to be a way to swing is about listening and playing along with the recording. So, so many great examples that you could listen to. Um, Mid-morning snack, thank you very much. You're gonna wanna concentrate though on things that you really think are super hard swinging. You know, things that come to mind are like Paul Gonsalves solo on the Duke Ellington Live in Newport. That just popped into my head. Um, Winton Kelly solo on Freddie Freeloader on Miles Davis. But it could be something that's not 50 years old also. It's whatever you think is really swinging. You're gonna wanna listen to it a lot, really concentrating on the groove because that's ultimately what swing is. And then, playing along with the recording, just concentrating on the swing, on the swing and the groove. So if you're a horn player, that's gonna mean like learning a solo, maybe you just learn one chorus of a solo. But you play along with the recording and you know, really pump up the volume or get the headphones going or something um, so that you can hear yourself playing along with it, but you're mainly hearing the recording. And what you're trying to do is match from a rhythmic standpoint, you're not even I mean, you're trying to play the right notes too, but you're mainly just kind of rhythmically and timing, trying to match what's going along with the recording and then repeating that over and over again. If you're a pianist, maybe learn some comping rhythms, even if you don't know the exact chords and play that along with you know, a great pianist that you like and you think is really swinging. Um, but basically it's just listening, but concentrating on that element because just like learning a language, learning an accent or whatever, we wanna learn to imitate and then talk along with it and compare ourselves and doing it in real time while you listen to a great recording, there's nothing like it, okay? So that's number two. Number three of our seven ways to swing, and this is to practice on one note. So what do I mean by that? Let's go back to our B flat blues, um, or let's go to E flat blues, just for a little bit of variety, okay? So you're gonna take a tempo, and this can be any tempo that you're gonna wanna swing at, and should be different tempos, and work this into your practice routine, and you're gonna play a number of choruses where you're only playing one note. So if I do an E flat blues about here, one, two, three, four. So if you can make one note swing, you'll be on your way. You're gonna to wanna to take rhythms that you hear. Now obviously you don't have any kind of melodic situation or even harmonic um, situ uh, tool to be able to use. You just have the rhythmic tool to be able to swing, okay? Um, and yeah, if you're a pianist, you can kind of cheat by playing a bass line and stuff. But look, I'll do it with just like one note. One, two, three, four. What this will do is start to kind of force you into coming up with rhythmic phrases that are swinging, that are right in the time, that have, the, that have some interesting syncopation, accents, and all those kind of things. You can do it at a faster tempo. One, two, one, two, three. Okay? Now, of course, you can extend this on. This will be kind of bonus where you take two notes. One, two, a one, two, three. Okay, but really just one note is the place it starts. And especially those slower tempos, a one, two, three, four. That's where it's at, okay? So that is, what was that, number three? One, two, three, yeah, practice on one note. Okay, four of our seven ways to swing Rhythmic precision, okay? This is so important, and no matter what you play, no matter how many notes, no matter what tempo, no matter what style, this is where it's at. Um, you know, for really for any groove, this is important, um, but for swing especially, because if you think about how it feels, there's a certain tension in that precision. It's 
not the kind of groove where it kind of comes and goes with the volume. Like if you play quieter, you slow down a little bit or there's swells and you push for, no, it's a boom, boom. It's a math, there's a mathematical element to it, a robotic element, but in a positive way, right? So whatever you play within that groove that's already there has to be rhythmically precise. You can bend it and pull it back and forth, but that underlying precision's there. So even if I go, if I go into that 16th note accented thing, it's gotta be not, you know, where it's just slowing down or, or speeding up even the slightest bit. It's gotta be right in there. I should have said robotic. You don't want it to sound robotic, but it has to be precise. There has to be that underlying Okay, so play with rhythmic precision. Of course, practicing with a metronome is gonna help you a lot with that. Uh, number five of our seven ways to swing. Play with confidence. Okay, this is so important because as you're practicing all these different ways, as you're learning solos, playing along with the recordings, um, playing with rhythmic precisions, the swing feel is a very confident feel. So you can't go in kind of meekly peeking around the corner. You gotta just put your foot all in it. You gotta jump right in it. So. Even if you're playing some different, play it confidently. There's a swagger with swing usually that needs to be there and you have to play confidently. And if you don't really feel confident, fake it. And uh, because it's, it's just an important part of the sound. It's not a meek kind of sound. Now I know I was kind of playing loud and ignorant there, which is the easiest way to demonstrate it. But even if you're playing, you know, soft. there's still that confidence needs to be there. Okay, so that's a really important one. That's one, two, three, four, five in our, one, two, three, four, five, in our seven ways to swing. So we got two more. Okay, number six, use offsets. Now this is something that people comping, piano, guitar, drums really think about, and especially at the kind of slower tempos can be very effective. And um, you know, a lot of times we think about them in terms of triplets. So if we've got one, two, three, four, That kind of tempo. So I'm playing all eighth notes, but then now I'm going to some triplets. So if I go to triplet and do use an offset. So instead of and an offset with the triplet, there's a number of different ways. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two. You could just offset you know, two, three, or just two, or just three, or just one. Um, well, just one would just be quarter notes, I guess. That's like playing with confidence, right? But you're offsetting, you're just like. But that gives you an opportunity then to resolve things. And you can do the offsets with the eighth notes too. So that's using offsets. I don't know if that's an official term, but that's what I'm calling it. Okay, so that's six. Um, number seven. So this one is um, of our seven ways to swing. This is wear a scarf. I don't know if you guys are familiar with hashtag jazz scarf, but that's been trending the last few weeks. And I'm not sure, but I did do some episodes wearing a scarf. I actually played a gig recently in a cold venue in Chicago. Uh, well, it was cold one of the nights where I had to wear a scarf. So, and I was kind of swinging that night. I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna say number seven. This is kind of um, uh, a, not part of our satisfaction guarantee. 
at, that we usually have at the You'll Hear podcast, but wear a scarf. You can try it out and see what you think, okay? So hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, you know, this is number two at the piano this week by myself and is a little bit dictatorial, a little bit of a lesson. Um, so if you like this kind of thing, this is what we do here at Open Studio all the time. Feel free to come check us out at openstudionetwork.com. We've got a um, number of lessons, piano, bass, guitar, vocal saxophone. I've got a number of different lessons and this is kind of how we do it, you know? Um, so we hope that you'll check us out for the new year for some reference learning materials for you. Um, and uh, until tomorrow, you'll hear it.